Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Arena Simulation, specifically the Create and Dispose modules. After watching this, you'll have an idea of how to make a basic Arena Simulation, provided you can already get started and understand the differences and settings in the Create and Dispose modules. Let's go ahead and get started. So as we jump through this, I'm going to talk about a few different things going on here, and then talk about the different settings that are important for you to understand it. Let's start with where you would find the different modules. Depending on what version of Arena you have, they're going to be in slightly different places. In Arena 16, they're going to be under the discrete processing settings, under Create, as well as Dispose. In earlier versions of Arena, they might be under Basic Processes. By the way, I only have Basic Processes shown here because I opened up an older model in Arena 16. They're not backwards compatible, but it is interesting to know that. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Create module first. Now, what the Create module does, and it's really, really important to have, is this is actually going to be creating the entities that are flowing through your discrete event simulation. These entities could be something like parts flowing through a, man flowing through a manufacturing system. They could be something like customers arriving at a queue in a hospital, in a coffee shop, or they could really just be any other sort of entity that you want flowing through your system. I'll even show you a more advanced method where these are actually representing Kanban cards in a manufacturing environment, which actually get paired up with your parts. Of course, as I'm going through this video, I'm going to reference a few other modules that I'm not talking about specifically in this video. You're more than welcome to check out the Arena Simulation playlist on this channel for, for more and more Arena videos. Let's go ahead and talk about the Create module. Now, the first thing you should know is that each one of these modules needs to have a distinct name. I'm just going to call this Create One because that's the default. You could call it Create Main Entity, Create Parts, whatever you want here. Now, you also can create a specific entity type. I'm just using Entity One in this case here. You can actually have two different Create modules and two different branches, have a Create One and a Create Two, and have them making different entity types or the same entity type. One of the most important things to understand next is the time between arrivals or the inter-arrival time. And you're, what you're going to see here is the average is going to be the, in the value category right here. I have it set to exponential time between arrivals, which is really interesting from a mathematical perspective because an exponential time between arrivals means it doesn't matter how long it's been since the last one, you're still expecting it to take that median value or mean value rather before the next one gets here. That's different compared to something like constant or uniform, and is why you see this used in a lot of further things, such as a Poisson process. Now, you can have random exponential as the default there, and you can also set it to a bunch of other things. If you want to have this set to an expression, you can have it be exponential, triangular, uniform, really whatever you want. In fact, you can even build your own using continuous and discrete functions down at the bottom, so you can create whatever you want. Input and output processing is an entirely different story that I may get to at some point in the future. For this one, I'm going to pick triangular. Triangular is used a lot more, uh, is in my opinion, more common or better to be used than normal, because if I tell you you're arriving with the normal distribution time between arrivals of one minute, standard deviation of 0 0.5, it's pretty likely that you could somehow hit a negative value which doesn't make any sense. So triangular can be a lot better to use for that reason. So in this triangular one, I'm going to specify a minimum, and let's just say the minimum time between arrivals is 0 0.5 minutes or 30 seconds. The mode or most common is just going to be one, and the maximum will be 1.5. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be symmetrical, but it is at this point. It's also important to set your time units if you want customers arriving once every minute on average, but you don't set it to minutes and set it to hours, it's not really going to make too much sense. Now, the other thing that you can also do is specify the entities per arrival. Maybe you want customers to always show up in pairs, or maybe you want to prompt the initial system with some number of entities and then never make any more. You can do that through the entities per arrival statistic. It's right now just set to one, and that's the most common. You could change that to two fairly easily. The other interesting thing is going to be the max arrivals. It's currently set to infinity, which means you can keep having people arrive. If you only wanted a maximum of 50 to arrive and no more show up again, you would just leave it at infinite. 
And there's also first creation. Maybe you want the system to not have any people start showing up until noon. You have customer type one shows up initially and then customer type two doesn't show up till the afternoon. You could do that as well. In practice, you're most commonly going to see exponential and it's going to be infinite arrivals. And the time between arrivals is going to work out so that your expected value over your whole simulation run will be equal to whatever you want it to be. That should be enough information about the create module there. The next thing that's interesting to talk about is now the dispose modules. Whenever you have a create module in there, you eventually need to have at least one dispose module. Entities have to be able to flow through the network and eventually get through whatever process, whatever logic you want to have in your simulation, have to eventually get to a dispose. And the dispose is pretty simple. All you have to do is connect them with the connector block right here, and there's not much to it. I find it helpful to have a dispose module for most different types of where people might end up in the process, just so you can see exactly how many showed up. If I have a system, a manufacturing system, where something is scrapped, I will have the regular one where you can just flow straight through. I will also have the you know, scrap dispose one separately, but you do want to make sure you have a dispose. You can't just leave them in a process and end it. You have to have a dispose module in there. You can choose whether or not to record entity, entity statistics. I don't think there's a good reason for ever turning this one off. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about a process module. There's going to be a lot that you can talk about this in a later video, but I'm just going to connect the create through a process module so that something interesting is happening, happening here. As you can see, I have it seizing one resource and it is a triangular distribution currently for the delay type. I'm just actually going to change this to be a constant of 0.75 minutes. And let's just go ahead and see what happens. And I want you to watch the entities come out of the create module and go through the process into the dispose one. It's happening very quickly, so let's slow that down. As you can see, there is a number ticking up here. We're currently at 11, 12, 13 going up in terms of how many entities, the time between arrivals. I should also mention that the time you're watching this in is not a continuous simulation. This is a discrete simulation. So even after just you know zero seconds, you could have an arrival and immediately have another one as long as nothing else is happening on the simulation clock. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit and see if we can get any further whip. As you notice, the mean for the create is lower than the mean for the process, which means the system is capable of meeting demand and you can actually run parts through it. The rip right, rip right here is at zero. Sometimes it goes a little bit higher. What I want you to think about, and actually you can see the number of create, you know, it's at 300, zero, one, and whip, maybe two occasionally, and then dispose should have that same amount. What I want you to think about is the create has a mean right now of one. What happens if I take the process and I double this time? I give it a mean of 1.5. What's going to happen? Give you a second to think about that, and let's start watching the whip graph. As you can see, the create module keeps spitting things out. The process module has some things that are left in it and even more arrivals. Now, some are finishing the process and are going through to the dispose, but because the mean time it takes for the process module to finish is greater than the time between arrivals, we're actually going to end up having an infinite queue and the WIP is just going to explode here. Now, what I want to show you before I talk about summary statistics is what happens if I set this like very, very close, 0.749. Now, this system should be capable of meeting demand, but we're going to, well, I should set it to 0.999, shouldn't I, if I'm trying to get directly below there. What we're going to end up seeing is that, well, I'll let you think about that for a little bit and then run this. So the whip starts out relatively low. It's capable of meeting demand. It's 0.99. There's a lot of variability there with the create module and not a whole lot with the process one. So their whip is going to be a little bit higher, but it's actually still capable of meeting demand. The process is now a whip of five, six. Eventually it's going to drop back down to zero, but it is something interesting to look at and consider. I have the simulation currently set up to run for 1440 minutes, which is the number of minutes in one day. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results as we finish this one out here. I just think it's interesting to look at some of the whip. And I'll talk about graphs and stuff like that in a different video. You can subscribe, make sure you don't miss that one.
Now, there are a few other things that I will, of course, touch on with the create modules. I told you I would talk about a Kanban system and show you a few examples of systems where I have multiple create modules being used. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results before we do that. Now, these results are actually just opening up in Notepad because Rockwell doesn't currently have that working here, but you can see a few interesting statistics specifically related to the create and dispose. That's going to be the entity one number in is what you're going to want to look at right here. Entity number in is 1450, entity one number out is 1445. That means there should be five items left, five entities left in process one at the very end of the state. If we look at process one number in queue, that's four. Process one number busy is one which adds up to a whip of five at the very end. There are a few interesting summary statistics there for the eh, to create and dispose modules. More on statistics again in a little bit later. Now, what I want you to show you now is examples of say some different create logic and we can ignore the rest of the modules here for now. So what the simulation does right here is it creates three different part types. Each of these are an exponential time between arrivals with the time set being mean value set. So you'll achieve the expected demand in the run of the program. It creates three different part types, part type one, part type two, and there's also part type three. We can also sort of create other entities. What I've done here is I'm just making one single part. This is going to be used to make an infinite arrival system which again, we'll talk about a little bit differently. It's complicated enough. That one deserves its own dedicated section. So this gives you a constant arrival every one second, but of course there's only one arrival possible and one entity for arrival. So this makes part number 1A, one of those at the very start, same thing for 2A and same thing for 3A. This is going to be used to match them up later on here. Now the Kanban example I wanted to show you is, well, we have our normal, uh, actually don't have any normal create modules here. The one at the top is again, that infinite arrival section where we make one entity and there's just one of those at the very start. And then we take that entity and we later duplicate it and clone it and separate it. So that there's always one available and we have Kanban cards. So K1 cards work right here. I'm just making one. I'm also combining it with that one later. And there's just one card needed for machine one. If we look at our K2 cards, we actually have two cards needed. So entities per arrival is two, max arrivals is one. That still works out to have two entities show up. If you did two and two, it would make four. And the last one again is going to be pretty similar to that first, just one entity per arrival. So you can make some Kanban cards there. And again, I'll go over, over more of these simulation types in a different video. So I hope that did help you, and I hope it gave you enough information to start working with create and dispose modules yourselves. If you like this video, you can go ahead and subscribe to find more videos like this one. With that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video.